Welcome to Woodworking Fever and More. Today's project I'm going to be building my second laundry cabinet. This one I built a year ago. So I began my project by ripping down 4x8 half inch plywood. After cutting the sides and the back of the cabinet, I ended up next cutting the height of the cabinet. After cutting the sides and the back of the cabinet, I was left with a smaller sheets that I ended up using later for the doors. I didn't pre-plan this too far ahead and I ended up using a little bit more sheets than I anticipated, which was fine. I wasn't willing to start learning at this point a uh, sketch up or any kind of a building or a design uh, program. So my designing program is basically me building stuff and figuring it out this way, for now at least. Next I began to put together the body of the cabinet. I ended up using 1 inch staples with some glue. Now the glue is not going to hold it really good being that they're butt joints. Later on I go in and actually use screws to hold it together. So when I designed this I didn't think too far ahead and I didn't design for me to be able to use every piece of the 4x8 sheet that I was cutting all my supplies out of. So I ended up with a piece that I was gluing on top and the bottom of the cabinet that wasn't wide enough for about a half inch. And that's where you see me here glue up a half inch piece. After I installed the top and the bottom piece, I went through and added some more staples for a little bit better reinforcement. I ended up just quickly getting sizes, uh, wrote it down, put a box together, and then as I did that, as I looked at the actual box, I realized I can't get it into the room. It's too big, I'm able to stand it up and it's right through these doors and straight to the right. So the laundry room is right behind the wall on my right. So I ended up sli and splitting it in half and I will have two cabinets that I'll help put it in easier, take it to the door easier and set them up. Set them up. So now I gotta build two of these. So after I cut down one cabinet into two, I had to go in and actually take another full sheet and cut the sizes down so that way I can fill in both of the cabinets. Next I cut out a shelf instead of having holes where I can move the shelf up and down I ended up just gluing it and stapling it so that way it's permanent because I knew what I was going to put on top and the bottom and it, that part wasn't going to change. After that I went through and drilled pilot holes and then I just used some places inch and a half, some places I ended up using two inch sheet rack screws. Next, I ended up moving over to the top cabinet and basically repeating the process where I, I filled in the bottom, gluing it up and then stapling it, and then adding the shelf and actually attaching it permanently here too. Alrighty, I took a 2x4, uh, I took off 1 8 off each side, and then I cut these uh, 3 quarter inches. I have four long ones and a little bit more of the shorter ones and these are going to be the face frame of the cabinet. They're going to be sitting on the side. I'm going to put some pocket joints so that way you can't see it from the inside and then we're going to build out the face frame for both of the cabinets. Let's do this. Not really sure if the face frame is a technical name for it but that's what I'm going to go with. So once I started to cut the pieces, I ended up laying them to where they're actually going to be screwed down to. After cutting and laying out the pieces, I took it over to the bench and started to use my Craig jig to do the pocket holes and gluing up the frame. 
I know you're supposed to use clamps to hold it down but I have a little technique where I usually screw it in with slowly and then backing it out not all it's not always the case but I ended up getting a pretty tight squeeze next I using the Craig jig I did the pocket holes on the actual cabinet and I drilled it in a way where you, you can't really see it where if it's up against the wall or it's up underneath where you're not gonna stuck your head in the cabinet and then look up and some places I had to actually screw do the holes where you actually can see it and later on I'll show you I was using the wood filler that stainable wood filler So once I build out the face frame of both cabinets, I ended up stacking them on top of each other and just kind of looking at the sheer size of it. And once I was done, I ended up mapping out the doors, what size, what height they needed to be and what the gap is going to be in between. And I wrote all the sizes on the right side of the cabinet since it's going to be up against the wall. You're not going to see it later. Once I had the sizes of the doors, I ended up ripping down pretty much the same technique as I used for the face frame a 2x4 and I ripped down the sides and the face frame of the door next I ended up ripping the leftover sheets of plywood to use as the cabinet doors here I'm gluing up a half inch by half inch piece of pine to cover up the end grain of the plywood Next, I used a half inch by two and a half inches of pine to make the face frame of the cabinet door. As you can see here, instead of trying to cut the precise height of the pieces, I ended up letting them run a little bit longer and then I ended up taking it over to the chop saw and just cutting them flesh. Next, once I was done with building the cabinet and the doors, I ended up taking the top cabinet down onto the bench so that way I can reach into it really nice and I started to stain it. This cabinet is going to stick out about 12 inches from the other cabinet so these are a little bit deeper so I don't have to stain the entire thing because there's going to be another cabinet that's going to be covering it so you're not going to be able to see it so I'm just going to need to paint a good about a foot stain it I should say stain this foot and the rest there's just going to be behind the cabinet there's no point of wasting stain each bay that I stained I ended up going back about 10 minutes and wiping everything down so that way the texture stayed consistent throughout the cabinet. Once I was done staining I ended up setting up the fans so that way it can dry faster. Next I took out the cabinets into the driveway with a very well ventilated open space. I ended up spraying it down with polyurethane. Now I didn't know that you're not supposed to use a spray gun, you're supposed to use a brush. Well, lesson learned, I, uh, after I was done I had to sand it down a light coat and spray it again and I ended up with tiny little bubbles. So I ended up putting a third coat on and once you look up really close you can see that it actually still has the tiny little bubbles and it's a little bit rough but uh, to me it looked fine so I ended up keeping it. Next I ended up cutting three inches out of the corner of the cabinet. That's because I have a gas pipe that leads into my laundry room. So where the cabinet is gonna sit before used to be a water heater. So I checked the wires make sure they weren't live. Once I put the cabinet in I didn't realize that I was supposed to remove the baseboards and the cabinet was crooked so it took me a second to figure out what was going on. Next I found the stud and drew in about 3 inch 
shit drag screws to fasten the cabinet. Next I drilled pilot holes on top cabinet afterwards realizing you're supposed to do it from the bottom to attach the two cabinets together. Once I did that I ended up attaching the top cabinet to the studs. The hinges for the cabinet doors came with the little diagram where you're supposed to drill the holes where the hinge is gonna fit. Now if you're watching this video and referencing this to your project I do have to say that these hinges that I just screwed on the one you see I ended up not using them they were too long I had to go buy a new set they were had to be a lot shorter. After the cabinet doors were installed the only thing was left is for me to buy the handles. After that I just show you what it looks like inside you can see where I had to cut a 3 inch by 3 inch on the right side of the cabinet to accommodate for the gas pipe. So this project turned out exactly what I needed is to match this cabinet here that I built a year ago. So if you have any questions about any of my techniques or how or what I did please comment down below. I will do my best to answer all the comments and in the description down below I have affiliate link to the tools that I used and some of the tools that I have that are similar that are on Amazon. So please like share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next project.